so Anne wants uh, an explanation of the respiration process so I'll be, uh, once give you the brief okay so respiration is basically the utilization of the all the nutrients that we get how our body utilizes it so uh, we need uh, we need oxygen for this purpose now how do we get oxygen from this uh, for this purpose we get it from the atmosphere okay and we get it from the atmosphere it goes on in a cycle like first the air goes into our nose or the nasal cavity which moves on to the pharynx okay this is through larynx okay oh no, sorry pharynx into the larynx and then trachea okay then from the trachea it goes into the bronchi then again into the bronchioles then alveoli okay then in the alveoli this exchange of gases happen and then after alveoli it again goes to the bronchioles from bronchioles to bronchi bronchi to trachea trachea to larynx larynx to pharynx pharynx to nose and then again through nose we breathe out okay so this is the basic outline so what uh, what is the basic uh, what is the confusion uh, that you had and sir i have a doubt like uh, the after bronchi is it to alveoli or to the bronchioles so okay from the bronchi it will go to the bronchioles okay bronchioles are like suppose uh, this is okay i'll tell you this is your lungs okay over here comes this is the bronchi I suppose then this bronchi gets distributed into small tube like structures okay these tube like structures are known as bronchioles they further uh, segregate and at last we have these round sac like structures which are known as alveoli okay is it clear yes sir now uh, there is a question by Akshita asking what are lymphocytes okay so if we talk about lymphocytes just let me clear this i'll tell you so if we talk about lymphocytes okay so you know our blood it is basically the blood that we have is basically plasma plus blood cells right so one of these blood cells the name of one of these blood cells is lymphocytes okay then there are white blood cells red blood cells various cells are there so one among them is known as lymphocytes okay is it clear to you akshita yes sir so should we move ahead now or anyone is having any other doubts Oh, uh, anyone having a, any other doubts? Sir. Yes. Sir, can you explain the uh, uh, role of lymphocytes? Okay, role of lymphocytes. If we talk about, so basically, uh, just a moment. Okay. So as I told you, they are basically one of the uh, blood cells. So it is produced by the bone marrow. Okay, bone marrow. The bone marrow produces.
Okay, sorry, there was some issue. Uh, so we'll I'll write down again for you. So you the bone marrow. Okay, am, am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, so I was talking about the bone marrow. Okay, this bone marrow. It produces the lymphocytes. Okay. These are basically some cells. So more, some of these lymphocytes, they move into our blood, but mostly they move into the lymphatic system, okay, which we studied yesterday. Lymphatic system. There are basically two types of lymphocytes, okay? There are two types. B lymphocytes. and T lymphocytes T. and they together they work together to fight to fight infections okay they act like a defense system for our body and they fight infections okay is it clear to you now yes sir okay so anyone having any other doubts Uh, anyone, if you have any doubt, you can ask. Sir? Yes? So the platelets, it is, uh, it is a substance which is used to uh, clot the blood, right? When we have an injury. Yeah, they are, they are a part of the, like, the blood, I told you, right? Uh, there is plasma, platelets, and some blood cells. So platelet is also one of the components which forms blood. Okay? Yes, sir. So, everything that we have studied till now is clear to you all, right? Okay, so we'll move ahead. Now we'll move on to, uh, in the last class, we studied about transportation, okay? Transportation in human beings. So today we'll study about transportation. In plants. Okay, so there's one. Okay, Adarsh is asking what are lymphocytes. So Adarsh, we just now discussed lymphocytes. 
So basically lymphocytes are cells. Okay. Some of the lymphocytes, they become a part of the blood and mm -hmm. mostly move into the lymphatic system. There are two types of lymphocytes, B lymphocyte and T lymphocytes, and they together work to fight against infections. Okay. Is it clear to you? Okay. 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 Uh, so if you want to note this down, you can note this down and just let me know when you have noted, we can move ahead. Okay. Okay, so should we move ahead, everyone? Okay, so I'll move ahead. So now we are talking about transportation in plants. Okay, so we all know that plants, uh, they require a lot of raw materials like water, minerals and all. Okay, so if we talk about those, so plant is stationary, so it does not move. We require energy for a lot of processes like we need to move, we, need, we run various activities we do and we need energy for that. But when we consider plants, they are stationary so their energy requirement is comparatively less than that of human beings okay so now let's talk about this transportation so first thing we'll see that basically the transportation the two things which need to be transported first one is the water and minerals okay and second is the food that is produced by leaves, the amino acids, etc. Okay, so these two things basically need to be transported. Okay, and for transportation of these, there are two different systems. Okay, so there are two different systems in plants. One is monitored by the xylem. Okay, and one is monitored by phloem. So they are basically vascular tissues, vascular tissues. This is what they are generally known as. So if we talk about xylem, xylem is used for transportation of water and mineral and this phloem this is used for transportation of food and other products. So if we see the water will always come from the roots and move to the leaves. Okay, so always the movement will be in one direction. So this is unidirectional. Unidirectional means that the movement can happen only in one direction. But the phloem is bidirectional because the leaves can be anywhere. So the tree tree trunk may also need uh, energy and the topmost branch will also need energy so they transport in both the directions okay so these are the basic two differences between xylem and phloem just note these down and then we will be uh, the, uh, studying both of them in detail okay Uh, just let me know when you guys have noted.
okay so we'll move ahead now is there anyone who is still noting so i'll move ahead there is no one who's noting so next the first thing we'll talk about is transport of water okay transport of water so we know that water is absorbed from the soil so basically the parts which are in contact of the soil they absorb water and in most cases it is the roots so what happens is we know the xylem tissues are used for this purpose so xylem tissue Okay, xylem is used for this purpose. I told you, wait, I'll explain you in detail. So I told you that xylem is used for this purpose. Now xylem, it consists of xylem tissues. Like these are parts of the xylem. Xylem vessels. And tracheids. Okay, so these are the various parts and they combiningly are known as xylem, okay? So now what happens is mostly the it is the root which is in contact. Okay, uh, parenchyma, yes, uh, these are the type of cells but I'm just talking about the parts, okay? The parts of the xylem. So you can write it down. That's not an issue. But if you even write these three down, write these three, then also it will do. It's not, uh, you won't be judged wrong. So if we talk about this, basically what happens is let this be the land surface. This is our plant. Okay. And these are the roots of the plant which are going inside so we see that these roots they are in connection to the soil now what happens is at the roots okay the first thing we need to take up water through roots water needs to come inside the roots so what will happen is at the roots cells which are in contact with soil actively take up ions okay so what happens is suppose i magnify this part okay now this is the root this is the soil near the root so the cells which are in contact with the soil they'll take up some iron they'll rapidly start taking up ions from the soil so you know suppose if we connect uh if there are two containers like this and one semi -perme semi permeable membrane is there okay and there is some amount of water over here and some amount of water over here and if i mix a few things in this water then water will start moving from the water will start moving over here okay because the concentration of water will decrease on this side so similarly as electrol uh, as ions get mixed inside over here so water starts moving inside the roots okay in order to balance the concentration okay is it clear to you all is it clear yes sir yes sir okay Anne has raised her hand Oh uh, yes, and 
Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. Is uh, sir the red color? What does it mean? Oh, it is a semi-permeable membrane. It is basically a boundary which allows only a few things to pass. Okay. Yes, a semi-permeable membrane we call it. Okay, so we should move ahead now. So this happens basically. Okay, this movement is okay. So the first movement is because there is difference in concentration of the ions between root and soil okay so the water comes inside the soil okay so gradually the water will start coming inside and as the water is moving inside the water will be pushed upwards towards the rest of the uh, plant okay but again uh, i'll write this down for you because of this intake water creates water column okay water column is created which steadily moves upwards okay so as water is constantly coming inside the water which is already inside it starts moving upwards okay so this is how the water is going upwards but now again when you see a big tree just this small force is not enough to take water to such great heights so what happens is there is one more okay one more phenomena which helps in transporting water okay so first one is uh, clear to you first one that we studied was because of difference in the concentration of the ions okay this was the first phenomena so just note this down and let me know when you have noted so i'll tell you about the second phenomena just let me know when you guys have noted we'll move ahead then Okay, so is there anyone who is still noting? Ok, 
okay so uh, we'll move ahead now on to the second phenomena okay so now what happens is uh, do all of you know what transpiration is does everybody know what transpiration is what is transpiration can someone uh, define yes adarsh to ventilator nahi the breathe in air no chill by by fine air particles oh can you repeat please the ventilator it the breath in air by no chill no do do fuck there it let the ventilator okay uh, it's not exact it's not completely correct anyone else who wants to try okay so there is one answer by piyush that is loss of water due to absence of air and vipul has said removal of excess of water from leaves and atharv is saying loss of water in the form of uh, water vapors and piyush is saying like in humans peri okay it's perspiration okay i understand so it is basically the loss of excess water from plants or to be precise from leaves into into the atmosphere okay so this is what transpiration is the loss of excess water from leaves into the atmosphere so what happens is let's suppose like this is one stem this is a branch and from here we have this leaf okay now there is one leaf cell okay there is leaf so there are lot of cells in the plant okay so in this manner there are cells all over like this now what happens is when the plant undergoes transpiration so suppose the outermost cell will lose water okay so the water moves out okay i'll draw with blue the water moves out so this cell becomes empty so water will move into this cell okay water will move into this last cell so gradually the water from the last cell will move on one cell above and in this manner the water will move upwards okay is it clear to everyone how this movement is happening so in this manner there is a pull kind of force created okay you see over here the water will be pulled upwards and we call this as transpirational pull transpirational pull okay i'll explain once more not an issue i'll draw a bigger diagram so let this be a leaf okay and this is one cell there are cells all over the plant okay you know that so what happens is suppose this cell has some water but transpiration happens and this water moves out so there is water in every every cell right 
there is some amount of water so as transfer this cell will lose water just a moment and it will become empty so this water will move into this cell then this cell will become empty so water will move over here then this will become empty so water will move from over here so one by one you see that water gradually the water will move in this manner and the last cell which will be there it will be empty and it will take up water from behind that is the soil so is it clear to you now yes, in sir. this manner a pull force is created that is known as transpirational pull okay now is it clear to everyone anyone having any doubts in this okay so now i'll explain okay adarsh yes adarsh where do you have confusion no sir oh it's clear to you yes yes okay so basically what happens is the water which is lost in the form of vapor through the leaves during transpiration creates a suction in the cell which causes water to move up towards leaves this is called transpirational pull okay one thing that you guys should keep in mind is that this transpirational pull this is the major uh, phenomena which causes the water to move but during night when the stomata is closed okay at night when the stomata is closed then uh this iron because of the iron the effect of okay so the iron one we call root pressure plus transpirational pull okay generally they two work together and transpirational pull this is the major one but at night there is no transpirational pull as there is the stomata is closed so only root pressure is responsible at night time okay is it clear anyone having any doubts just note this down and let me know when you have noted down Okay, just let me know when you guys have noted, and we'll move ahead.
ओके हैज एवरी वन नोटेड at night there is no transpirational pull because no transpiration happens as the stomata is closed okay that's why uh, there is no transpiration pull during night is it clear uh just one ev when everyone has noted let me know is there anyone who is still noting or should we move ahead okay so i'll move ahead now so this was about the transport transportation of water now we'll talk about transportation of transportation of food and other substances now when we talk about this this is done by phloem and the phloem okay so and the, when we talk about phloem the phloem consists of can anyone tell me all the parts of the phloem sir yes sir sieve tubes sieve cell companion cells stretched vessels sieve tubes companion cells and uh, vessels what else stretched okay can the phloem tissues okay so basically these are the parts so now uh, when we talk of phloem we know that phloem through phloem we can transfer in both the directions that is upward as well as downwards okay so what all do we transfer we transfer the food and the amino acids and all the products not only of photosynthesis but all other products we transfer through phloem because and they are mostly transported to uh, the storage parts okay mostly uh, please uh, mute yourself they are mostly transported to storage parts like fruits or seeds okay so uh, what happens is and this uh, movement the substance uh, just a moment i'll write down a definition this is about translocation okay i'll write down this definition this is an important term okay so basically we are talking about translocation so the it is basically the movement to of food to the storage organs this is known as translocation okay that just a moment the transport of 
products of photosynthesis is called translocation okay so just note all this down and then we will move ahead and i'll tell you a bit about uh, the phloem and that how transportation happens through phloem okay just note this down first Okay, just let me know when everyone has noted. Has everyone noted this down? Is there anyone who is still noting? You can tell. I'll wait for you or else I'll move ahead. Okay. So now we'll move ahead. And I'll talk you a bit about, I'll tell you a bit about translocation or the transfer through phloem. So in phloem, there is no particular, like over there we saw that there were forces because of transpiration and the root pressure, uh, root pressure which were responsible for the transportation. But translocation, when we talk of translocation, is done by using energy okay so basically atp is used atp is used now what happens is there are certain materials like materials like sucrose just like glucose it is also a form of carbohydrate only su sucrose they are transferred into phloem using ATP Now, as see, suppose this is the phloem and you have transferred the sucrose, so the water will again move into the phloem, right? The water will move into the phloem and then through with the help of this water, it gets uh, all the material that we need to transfer gets uh, transported to all the parts okay this material that we need to transfer is basically soluble material okay by soluble we mean that it gets mixed with water so with water this material gets transported to all the parts where we need to transport okay so as there is more pressure over here because of water so this will move to areas or tissues where pressure is low okay is it clear now anyone having any doubts
Okay, Anne has raised her hand. Yes, Anne. So, uh, what do you mean by sucrose? Sucrose is basically just like uh, we have glucose. Glucose is a carbohydrate, right? So, sucrose yes, is also a type of carbohydrate only. In plants. Yeah, in plants. Okay, it is a basically a type. of carbohydrate you should remember that is it clear anyone having any other doubts uh, so just uh, note this down and let me know when you guys have noted down so that we move ahead okay so in this manner all the food produced is transferred to all the parts of the plants so that the plant can grow and various uh processes and various parts get all the required whatever product they required they receive it okay so is it clear to everyone this is how the phloem works so now we have talked about the working of Uh, xylem and phloem, both the vascular tissues. So I'll just show you an image, which will give you a bit more idea. So just hold on for a minute. Okay. So is this visible to all of you? over here we have the xylem vessel and the phloem vessel okay in the phloem there can be two way flow okay uh, the products can fall uh, uh, flow in both the ways and when we talk about the xylem there is only one way in which the water can flow the water and minerals and there is no end walls between these in the xylem but you can see that there are small small cells which have walls in them okay is it clear to all of you oh uh, everything is clear to everyone anyone having any doubts so with this we finish the transportation in plants also so in the next class we will be talking about excretion and after excretion we will be finishing with this chapter so anyone having any doubts you can ask okay there is a hand raised by drishti oh drishti you have not connected your audio not able to hear you uh just a minute i'll ask drishti to connect audio okay yes drishti uh do you have any problem or any confusion okay so i hope as i see no questions everything is clear to everyone okay also uh, i had requested you or to please review the s2s app on the play store so i was not able to find everyone's review so please go and positively uh, review today okay please go and positively review the app today i'll be just noting down everyone who is reviewing i have seen piyush uh, akshita and bhavika i have seen the review of uh, these three so rest everyone also please go and review the app okay just after the class please go and review okay is it clear to everyone anyone having any doubts
okay or uh, if you have reviewed or uh, anyone who has reviewed so you can just uh, message us that you have reviewed and we'll come to know that you have done the review okay so just review and send us a screenshot or just message us that you have reviewed and we'll understand okay not an issue so i'll end the okay Anne has a question to explain activity 6.8 just a movement okay so the activity 6.8 which says take two small pots of approximately the same size and having same amount of soil one should have a plant in it place a stick on this uh, stick of the same height as the plant in the other pot okay so now cover the soil in both the pots with the plastic and so that no moisture can escape cover both sets one with the plant and the other with the stick with plastic sheets and place in bright sunlight so what basically you will observe is in the uh, pot which has plant there will be droplets of water on the plastic sheet as transpiration will occur but with uh, on in the pot where there was stick there will be no droplets of water okay so this is what basically will happen in the activity 6.8 okay and yes sir so i'll end today's class now then good night everyone take care just uh, review the app sure positively and send us the screenshot when you have reviewed